Let's uh, get it. Subscribe to the channel. Ah, uh. Y'all start around, start around, start around, start around. Let me do this. Let me do this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I go by the name of God. I got the guy gaming. Welcome back to the channel. The second channel. All right, y'all get a thumbnail. Y'all see the title today? Yes, we got another power skill, bro. And this is, well, we got toasty. Toasty, and this is why Goku versus Big Three isn't close. I don't know what they're gonna be about. I saw Naruto in there, and I'm like, okay, let's 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 just hear this. Let's just let's let's just hear it, bro. I'm here for it all, like, bro. I'm just saying. I see Naruto. I'm just saying. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But yeah, man. Anyway. How y'all day, man? Y'all been doing good? I've been doing slow. So y'all already know the link is going to be in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for a dude, man. I'm a slogan. I'm a slogan. I'm a slogan. I'm the greatest. I'm the worst. I am. I am. I am. I am. Make this video. But there's always people like that. Son wait, Goku. Wait, 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 wait. What is versus... that? But there's always people like that. Luffy is enough for Goku. Mm. Now me, I I know it'd be some people that like do stuff like that. Me, I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. Gear Five do look impressive. Me, Gear Five is impressive. I gotta I gotta check out on something because I've been so curious. Cause I've been on and off with One Piece, man. But I've been one. I'm so curious and want to know what that Gear Five is, bro. I mean, I I see. I guess he's like a cartoon character, but still, man. I I I got to dig more into that though. At Son Goku versus the Big Three. Argu Come on, man. That Naruto, bro. Arguably some of the most debated characters in the entire power scaling genre. I mean, I don't really. I know he'll, he'll body Ichigo. I ain't worried about that. Ichigo is not him, bro. I'm just saying, you know, Ichigo is not him. Ichigo cool, but Ichigo is not him. Period. For this video, I'll. Mm -hmm. See, like I said, Ichigo is not him, bro. Ichigo cool, but Ichigo is not him. Naruto, bro. Naruto gonna put up a fight. Naruto gonna put up a fight. Gear 5, like I said, Luffy Gear 5 is very impressive, but like I said, man, I don't know, man. It just, it's just impressive. That's all I get from Gear 5. But Naruto? I don't know, man. Let's go. I'll be giving the most agreeable scaling for all of these characters. And for the second part, I'll let my friend Tempest explain the more crazy side of the scaling and how mm. that would work out. Also, I want this video to reach a bigger audience, so if you've watched this video and enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe as it helps a ton. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers soon, and if you want to be a part of that milestone, it'd help a lot. Also, apparently a large portion of my audience isn't even subscribed to me, so if you're one of those people and enjoy my videos, please be sure to do that. So, who wins? Goku or the Big Three? <laughs> uh, yo, man, come on, man. This Naruto is his god form, man, but I get it. Super Saiyan, I mean, God, you know, UI, I mean, Ultra Instinct, Goku, come on, man. Come on, man. But this Naruto, bro, we talking Naruto. Nigga, this is Naruto, nigga. Come on, man. I'm genuinely sorry for the One Piece fans on here. Thank you. But Luffy is getting shit on. Thank you. Like I said, Gear 5 is very impressive. But, bro. No. No. By Goku. And it's Thank not you. close. Luffy's speed is about the speed of light when he comes back to Sabaody. So, by that, Luffy currently should be FTL. You could argue that light speed attacks in One Piece are hyped up as, like, an actual threat when they're used by someone like Queen. But even Sanji is able to. You been when he was shooting them bullets at. <laughs> yeah, that part. Dodge these and without difficulty. Throughout this video, it's going to be pretty clear that these characters are faster than light at the bare minimum, so it doesn't really matter at all. So I knew they were going to. I knew they were going to do that. I knew. I knew they were someone going to put this little clip. Naruto and um Boo when then Naruto going to say, "I was just like you," and then Goku. I mean, Boo did the little blast. I ain't going to lie. I saw it on Twitter. It was funny. I had to laugh. So just to make things easier, I'll just yep, say all that right now. I was just like, I laugh. I ain't going to hold you. I retweeted it too. It was funny. All of the big three are just like relative. I love Naruto, but that right home was funny. And speed. I've already went over the details about the size of the One Piece Earth in my Naruto vs. Luffy video. In that video, I put the size of the One Piece world many times larger than that of Earth, which would make sense considering how long it took them to cross the Grand Line, with Jupiter being the stretch of the argument and the size of the sun being a bit of a highball. 
Using Calyx and Sengoku's statement, it would be arguable for the One Piece Earth to be the size of our sun, which would ultimately get Luffy's AP to star level. Whitebeard was a Yonko alongside Kaido, Shanks, and Big Mom. All four of these characters are pretty much implied to be safe from another Yonko's assault. Luffy then beat- I got respect Whitebeard, man, because Whitebeard, I looked at, um, like, who I was, or what, a, ter a, ter a Taurus? Oh, you know, the Zodiac, Tur Arians, or whatever, the, the Aprils. I got respect on, man. He with me. I gotta respect them. It's Kaido, which would get Luffy to star levels of AP, but that's only if you agree that the One Piece world is as large as the sun, which the consistency with that is kind of questionable as the feats, which are regarded as some of Luffy's strongest attacks ever, are rarely even calced above multi-continental. So if the One Piece world was as large as the sun, these feats would be planetary at most without the Whitebeard statement. This statement about Newgate is more than likely not supposed to be taken literal either, as it's most likely just saying that Whitebeard can destroy Marineford and thus break the balance of the world. This would be a similar situation to Ido Madara being universal because he can smash all things in the universe, or fucking Tamari being universal. It's crazy that he playing Naruto, one of the Naruto sounds, music. It's in the background. Genuinely would just come down to your interpretation. So we would have Luffy's AP at Planetary, then can simply multiply his powers with the gears. And depending on the multiplier, he's arguably dwarf star. See, man, this gear five is, is I'm, I'm, I, oh my God. I want to know so much about it, bro. I got to know so much. I want to learn so much about it, but man, I don't be, I don't, I probably got to get into that one, one piece manga, but man, I don't know, man. I got, I got to do research on it right now, but that, this, this gear five look very impressive to me, man. I can't hold you. Star levels of AP. Naruto as an adult should scale to Momoshiki. Momoshiki is someone who on multiple occasions has been compared to someone like Kaguya, so he'd probably scale to pre-Earth Chakra Fruit Kaguya, so him and Kinshiki should be an overall threat to Kaguya at her full power. We know that Momoshiki in base absorbed half of Naruto's chakra, and they completely absorbed Kinshiki, so he should just be as strong as Kaguya at the very least. Kaguya is someone who is capable of completely rebooting her dimensions using her expansive true seeking orbs, which essentially destroyed an entire planet, then created an entirely new one, but still gets smacked around by Naruto using half power. Momoshiki even needed his monkey rock to even overpower Naruto, so Naruto should at the very least scale to fuse Momoshiki. So Kaguya is relative to fuse Momoshiki, who is relative to Naruto. I know there's probably going to be someone who tries to argue that Kaguya or Momoshiki is stronger than the other, but it doesn't really matter as solar system level is just really wide and can vary, which means that adult Naruto should be large star level to even solar system levels of AP. Throughout Yuha's appearance, he absorbed a ton of people's powers and to be more specific, the Soul King. The Soul King is the opposite of a star, so instead of attracting a planet, he will repel them. He was stabilizing the entire human world in the Soul Society as well as the Hyuken Mundo. The collapse of this was going to collapse all three of the worlds, which essentially means that every space where a soul exists would simply cease to exist. My point being that the Soul King is at least worth a small star. However, similar to Kaguya, we need to take in the fact that the collapsing of the three worlds would have been done over time. Another thing is that despite the fact that the dimensions hosting the world of the living and the Soul Society are at least galaxy-sized, saying that the cataclysm that would happen would entirely affect those galaxies or universes, is a complete headcanon and backed up by nothing. It was never stated by anyone in the manga to be the case. Mimi Hagi is someone who was capable of doing the Soul King's duty, and Yuha absorbed him while making him look like a clown. Which means that Yuha was most likely just far stronger than the Soul King before absorbing him. He also absorbed characters like Valkyrie and many more strong characters, so Yuha's AP should at the very bare minimum be large star level, but even solar system levels of AP. Ichigo would scale to Yuha's full power, or at the very bare minimum, close to that level of Yuha's power. Yuha, before going all out, even acknowledged Ichigo's Shikai, however was still way stronger. It took the Grand Rei Serogetsuka Tensho to even make Yuha use his full power and go all out, and then Ichigo used his Bankai, Yuha wasn't trying to fight him, so he just snapped Ichigo's blade using the Almighty from the start. So Ichigo using his Bankai was capable of giving Yuha a run for his money. However, Yuha still defeated Ichigo with ease, but this wasn't because of his strength, but because of his hacks. So Ichigo would scale to Yuha, making Ichigo anywhere from large star levels of AP to even solar system levels of power. Yeah, I'm saying Ichigo cool, man, but I'm saying Ichigo is not him, bro. But I ain't, I ain't got no problem with um, Bleach fan. They cool. The Bleach fan folk, they cool, man. They don't really be, I don't think they really be into that like that, but they cool. 
I'll be telling you, Ichigo is not him, bro. Ichigo cool, but Ichigo is not him. I'm going to be using Dragon Ball Z Goku for my portion. If you're wondering why I'm not using Super Goku, just be for real. Current Super Manga Goku is literal infinities beyond Z Goku on some like actual Buzz Lightyear shit. Do you actually think any of these guys are landing a hit on Mastered Ultra Instinct fucking Goku? I mean, we talking if we talking Naruto, man. That, that, I mean, I get it. I, 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 I mean, yeah, I get it, man. I get it. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Naruto's still gonna be able to land a punch on him now. Naruto gonna land a punch on him now. Come on, man, stop it. Goku in early Dragon Ball Z is bastard Ultra Instinct fucking Goku. Go yeah, like I said, yeah, Naruto gonna land some hits, bro. I'm just letting you know, man. Naruto gonna land some hits, bro. Like I said, on um, that. Not Luffy and, and um, Ichigo, yeah, but Naruto gonna land some hits, bro. I'm just letting it be known. Goku in early Dragon Ball Z is easily planetary. This is pretty blatantly the case, as someone like Piccolo, who was slightly weaker than Goku around the time, was able to just blow up the moon. And this wasn't like Piccolo struggling or whatever, because he does it seemingly without effort. Then, by the time of the Saiyan Saga, he's able to completely destroy Nappa and overpower Vegeta's Gallic Gun, which was going to destroy the entirety of the earth. By the end of the Namek saga, Goku But well, y'all know me. Y'all know how I am. We won't really know. We won't really know, but we let our mind run wild, bro. Who was able to overpower Frieza going all out. Frieza is someone who obliterated the entirety of Planet Vegeta in his first form with just his fingertip. And using this calc, the size of Planet Vegeta should be Dwarf Star, which would put Frieza at Dwarf Star level in his first form. And using basic power scaling, he's easily in the levels of small star level, to even star levels of AP. We then have Cell being stated to have the power to wipe out the entire solar system in one attack. Cell Saga Goku is obviously notably weaker than Cell, so I wouldn't exactly say he scales to this. But Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is stronger than this. And in the Buu Saga, both Vegeta and Goku are stated to have surpassed the power of Gohan during the Cell games. Then he was able to keep up with Kid Buu at the end of Z who was able to destroy an entire galaxy, although over time, which would be a multi-solar system to galaxy levels of AP. Goku, as early as the Frieza Saga, was capable of avoiding Frieza's imprisonment ball, which is just paralyzing light, and he escaped it with his sheer speed. In the Frieza Saga. Keep in mind, this is pre-Super Saiyan, and he did this with absolute ease. And if we're using this traveling through hell calc, Goku should be quadru- My boy Pika. Trillions of times faster than light, just by traveling in hell, which is faster than any speed feat within the big three, and he did that speed feat in his base form. I think just by listening to what I just said, it should just be pretty clear that what I said about Luffy is pretty valid. He's just getting shit on by Goku. Although Luffy is a GOAT, he's just not on the same tier of power as Naruto and Ichigo, let alone Goku. Yeah, I can agree on that. I can somewhat agree on that, man. I'll be saying, like, bro... I be trying to tell people like, bro, Luffy is not, Luffy is not gonna beat Goku, man. But the exact same can be said about Naruto and Ichigo. I mean, yeah, Goku gonna. I feel like Goku could easily body, easily body on, um, but easy, easily body Ichigo. But I don't know about Naruto, man. Come on, bro. I don't know about Naruto, bro. Like, come on, man. Stop it. They are just not on Goku's level at all. They're slower, weaker, less. What? Stop! Let's skill. Let's skill. So they are just not on Goku's level at all. They're slower, weaker, less skilled. Goku could straight up just blitz them beyond. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Ichigo less skill, but I don't think he, I don't think he, um, to um, to Naruto about that, bro. But on uh. perception, and they wouldn't even know what happened. Both Naruto and Ichigo have universal interpretations of their power in which it may or may not shift the battle and or tide of this battle. During the fourth war, Kirito known as Kaguya or Tatsuki would emerge. Kaguya was stated and shown to being able to destroy her genesis or main dimension, with this dimension having a star within it, which is shown within the official of Yei of the manga, which is an exclusive part of the anime or manga that extrapolates upon key events within its story, to have not only a star, but a moon as well within it. This would make complete sense, seeing how these dimensions are shown to have full day and night cycles within them, which would debunk any other artificial light source arguments pertain to this argument. Kaguya being able to destroy the star and moon will get her to concretely star level with the possibility of solar system level at the highest. However, during the last, Naruto would then face off against one of the last descendants of Hamura Otsutsuki, 
Toneri. Toneri in the movie box said it stayed on two separate occasions to have Chakra not only comparable to that of Kaguya, but to be the strongest enemy Naruto has faced so far, which would also include the likes of the aforementioned Kaguya. This would include the likes of the aforementioned Kaguya as I said prior, meaning Toneri would scale about the likes of the Kaguya that resorted to taking the God Tree's power. Toneri's entire plan was to destroy Earth and hurl the moon at it due to the fact that he thought Earth's spatial curvature, as well as humans, were abusing their ability to manipulate the likes of Chakra. Naruto would then go on to beat up the likes of this threat greater than Kaguya and case him too, but one-shot him as well in the likes of his base form. These planetary to star level ranges of power aren't too outlandish seeing how characters like Kurama and Kagi and Toneri are consistently shown to be on this tier of power and could potentially be higher with true dimensional scaling if you were to use versus battle wiki standards for tiering. For those who still have some doubts of Naruto's truly starter possibly solar system level, within the fourth data book it's directly stated that the base 6 path stage mode chakra surpassed the likes of the KCM 2 plus stage mode transformation Naruto had used prior within the war arc, meaning this base stage 6 path with Naruto is already baseline planetary at the very least. Even with the spatial curvature of Earth being an original tandem when Kage was introduced and now a 16 in the present day Boruto era, again supports the idea that everyone on Earth including Naruto got stronger since the aforementioned 6 path state, with the anime saying that Naruto has the most potent chakra on Earth, which is the reason why it took Momoshiki so long to absorb the likes of his chakra. This is also the reason why the spatial curvature went from a 10 to an overall 16. This is even true with Naruto being able to one-shot beings directly stated to surpass the likes of Kage and in the likes of Kenshiki and Momoshiki, and with the light novels and manga stating that Sasuke could deal with Kage level beings on his own, in reference to Urashiki, Momoshiki, and Kenshiki in the present day Boruto time era. However, prior to almost all of Naruto history, Hagoromo and Hamura would then battle against the likes of a prime 10 tails absorbed Kaguya. Keep in mind, the aforementioned 9 tails only being a portion of the 10 tails of Royal Power. Even with all this power, Hagoromo would still be able to seal her alongside the likes of his brother Hamura within the Chibaku Tensei that later on became the likes of the moon that we see within Naruto the last. This Hagoromo also carried the fight against the inarguably stronger Kaguya, whom I already scaled to at least star level, so again, it'd be consistent with what the narrative provides. Creating a moon using various caps to be anywhere from a multi-continental to a small planetary feat, with it not being consistent with the narrative as Toneri, an even stronger opponent and or a character in the likes of Kaguya they fought, was going to hurl the moon at Earth and then destroy it. Kaguya's dimension was stated on multiple occasions to be a space-time by not only Kaguya herself, but Kakashi, Obito, Zetsu, and Naruto. A space-time by necessity would have to be fourth dimensional and dimensionality, with it not qualifying for universal plus ranges or power if you were to use versus battle wiki standards for tiering. Due to the fact that a space-time continuous have three spatial dimension and one to pro dimension, Kage was also going to destroy this space time using her Guru Damba and then recreate it, meaning she would scale to this attack due to the fact that it was her chakra she was using to destroy the aforementioned dimension in the first place. However, a newly acquired teenage six path but Naruto was going toe to toe with his same Kage and at one point even overpowered her using Boro Release. With Boro Release being stated to Ampu to the point where it surpassed the six gate, with the gates being stated within part once to being dozens upon dozens of times of an amp to the said user. Momoshiki the light novels and animated cartoon canon to the timeline was stated to create a parallel dimension to Naruto's own universe. Keep in mind, this dimension is held to multiple red shifts and nebulas within it, meaning this state would hold up to its validity, especially within the time of the Boruto era, which at the time of this recording is chapter 79, where we see Ada actually put an effect on the planet, which we do see stars and other celestial bodies in the background. By definition, a parallel dimension would have to be universal in size due to Naruto's universe being stated to be a universe on multiple occasions, with even Naruto regarding it as such in reference to Kagi's dimensions, which will further support the universal Naruto scaling I have been providing within this said video. Keep in mind, this is the same weekend Naruto that is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a fused Momoshiki who absorbed the likes of Kanshiki. Kanshiki in a Mortal Movie Guide data book was stated to have enough power to destroy and split the world and or the earth in half. Again, Kanshiki would have to be strong enough to split the earth beyond its GBE or gravitational binding field and completely separate it beyond its core. The same earth having an amp spatial curvature is with a spatial curvature being the amount of energy and or energy density the earth within the given context has accumulated or the progression of its existence. Meaning, this would be a quote unquote more powerful earth than what Kaguya had originally descended upon. However, back to the main point. Naruto was able to beat up the same Momoshiki who created a parallel dimension to Naruto's dimension, with the parallel dimension by definition being a self-contained plane of existence, coexisting with one's own reality, often called a multiverse. But, however, within Naruto, multiversal Naruto is just not a thing. For those who still deny this, it's directly stated within the Portal Light novels, which are indeed canon, that it was indeed a parallel dimension 
to Naruto's own universe. If you would like a more in-depth version of this scale, I do have a Universal Naruto video on my channel, so if you are curious, it's always there. However, as for the likes of Ichigo, within the manga, a dimension known as a Kyogoku exists within it, and the light novels, it's directly stated to be a hyperspace, with the hyperspace being a dimension with more than three dimensions, meaning at a bare minimum, Ichigo must be 4D in order for him to scale and or destroy the Kyogoku. However, he still loses to Naruto. <clears throat> in my personal opinion, <laughs> there are better arguments for Universal Ichigo <laughs> and or Bleach in general as things like the Don Guy and Mukin aren't really sufficient as the Mukin being infinite is directly contradicted by the light novel and manga statement as it's directly stated to be near infinite not only that, but within a fictional setting or sense, is mostly due in part to it being vastly large, as opposed to truly infinite, however this isn't always the case. In the case of the Dongai, however, being completely separated from space and time, this is also not the case, and I'll go on to explain why. We know this is the case, seeing how Ishin directly gives a time quantification and it's also stated to be surrounded and affected by torrents of space and time. Ichigo also begins to feel the duration of the time he spent within the Dongai when he does enter Karakura Town, meaning yes, it is still affected by time, however it has a different or alternate time flow than what Ichigo is used to. Firstly, thank you to Toaster for letting me have a part within this video, and also join the Discord server, it'll be linked down below. Uh, and as for Luffy... Uh, he's an island level fodder and uh, he's cheerleading the fight. Why is he here? Anyways, uh, tap us out. Peace. Goku and Beerus in the Battle of God's Ark were creating a dense ball of ki. The same ball of ki being stated multiple times by Whis to have the power to destroy the entire Universe 7 macrocosm containing multiple universe sized bodies. This would make the Universe 7 macrocosm a low multiversal construct, which is stated infinite in size by multiple data books like Daisenshu. Now, people like to bring up that this is mainly a Beerus feat, however, this isn't the case because it's stated that both are hitting each other again and again with the power capable of destroying the universe itself. And all of but it's still a Beerus feat, though, bro. All this was <laughs> done in Goku's Super Saiyan God form, which was later absorbed into base, making his incredibly powerful God form now his base. This is even supported when Goku himself states that he's still as strong as he was in his god form, and is even capable of pushing back Beerus, which he wasn't able to do it as effortlessly before. Beerus' sphere of destruction overpowers even this godly Goku in Super Saiyan, then Goku being motivated by his friends and family completely busts this attack that was previously giving low multiverso Super Saiyan Goku a hard time. All of this was done in his base form, if that's not enough for you then infinite Zamasu during the Goku Black arc engulfed the entirety of Trunks' timeline, even seeping into the present, this in itself would make Infinite Zamasu multiversal, who Goku himself was confident in the fact that he could have stopped Zamasu if he just had a Sensu Beam. With Jiren scaling over the same Zamasu and Goku beating Jiren in that same tournament, Goku is capable of stacking his power with Super Saiyan being a 50 times multiplier, 2 being a 2 times multiplier off of 1, then being capable of multiplying that by 4 times and becoming 400 times stronger. Then multiplying that by over 50 to 20,000 times with Super Saiyan Blue, then, during the Universe 6 tournament, Goku is able to stack Kaioken times 10 and become over 200,000 times stronger, and then surpasses this Kaioken times 10 in base blue by his rematch with Hit, meaning if he used Kaioken times 10 by this point, he'd be over 2 million times stronger, and then in the final arc of the Super Anime, he's able to get Kaioken times 20 and get over 4 million times stronger in the tournament, then potentially getting a thousands of times and by Ultra Instinct element alone, and mastering that and potentially growing hundreds of thousands of times stronger than he was in his godly base form at the start of the series. And since then, he's only gotten stronger in the manga. So even if we're using the universal scales for the big three, Goku is slapping them out of existence. Goku is just... I mean, I mean, yeah, but I mean, I still believe Naruto is still going to get some licks out of him. Too powerful, too strong, too fast, too skilled. Goku wins zero difficulty. We gotta remember, cause Naruto, Naruto, he um, uh, Naruto also smart now. He think before he act. So that's that's that what I'm. Naruto think before he act. He's like Deku. They think. I don't think Goku pretty much think when he get into battle. That he just go head in. So that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes you gotta use brain over everything. I hope I made that extremely clear. They are not landing a hit on Goku. That easy. But yeah, if you enjoyed, be like I said, man, Naruto will make a hit on him, bro. I'm just saying, like, like I said, Naruto more smart.
So of course he gonna use his brain before getting into a battle with Goku. I'm just saying, bro. I don't think Goku do that. Be sure to leave a like and die. Yeah, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, toaster. Yeah, that was a good one, man. But man, I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. Naruto gonna get a Naruto gonna get a lick off of him, bro. Even if they do go mouse and all that, but I'm just saying, Naruto is the most smart, bro. Uh, but they don't never think on that though. They don't never think about that part right now. Naruto smart, bro. He think before he act for, but you know what I'm saying though. But you already know. Link up in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs>